Hello, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. I'm a hands-on software architect and also the founder of developer2architect.com. In today's lesson, number 71, I want to investigate measuring scalability and what that actually means. So when we talk about scalability in any kind of architecture or any kind of system, scalability is defined for the ability of the system to operate as the number of users or requests increase. And so over time, we can start to see an increase in the number of users or requests and the, system to, uh, and the ability for the system to operate. Well, what does this actually mean? In other words, if we want to determine that our systems will actually scale, or if we want to demonstrate that they are scaling, what do we measure? And let's investigate that in this lesson. So there's three basic things that we can measure. And I'm going to show you five, but I want to show you the basic three first. The first thing we can ask, which is the most obvious one for scalability, is as the users, as the number of users or requests increase, is performance and responsiveness impacted? In other words, um, are we getting a degradation in the system from a throughput and performance? Um, are there increases in timeouts? And so all of a sudden we start to incur more timeouts because of maybe database weights or something like that. Um, is there an increase in system crashes? And so these are three core things. Now, two other aspects which you might want to measure are, is there enough database capacity? And furthermore, enough virtual machine capacity in terms of threads, memory, and CPU. Now, I generally, um, sometimes I do measure those bottom two, but those usually become more of a root cause analysis based on increases in timeouts or increases in system crashes or performance and responsiveness. And so the point is these are five basic things that we can actually measure. So let's actually take a tour of measuring scalability. So anytime we measure any sort of illity in architecture, there's two steps. We capture and then measure. Three things we can capture, two in an automated fashion. Um, we can capture timeouts based on any sort of API request or any sort of kind of mm, function call. Uh, we can actually know, and we do know, when a timeout occurs. We can send that to a message queue and capture that. We can also send the duration along with the user ID. And this, by the way, gives us information about the number of users in the system. The API request, every time that's sent out with durations, also gives us a count of the number of requests. And that's how we can track the increase in users and or requests. Now, another one is an app or service crash. Now, a lot of times this is manual. In most microservices ecosystems, we can leverage um, some of the information coming out of service orchestrators, such as Kubernetes, um, to be able to provide us that information. But a lot of times this is manual in terms of capture. Now, what we can measure, of course, based on that manual, and that's the glyph image there, are the number of crashes ac across users or requests. We know the number of users or requests. Are we seeing an increase in crashes? Um, also, from performance, I can measure the average response time across users per any given context. That can be the entire application, a particular domain group of services, or a particular service. I can measure max response times, and finally, the number of timeouts. And so these are four measurements to be able to not only detect scalability issues, but also demonstrate scalability um, within our application. Um, let me show you three graphs that uh, we can kind of play around with once we do start measuring. Now, anytime you measure scalability, it's always going to be a correlation graph. And so on the bottom here, I've got our average duration. And, and the time slice here is just over the course of the week and the number of users or requests. Now, let me, um, let me talk a little bit about users versus requests. My preference, everybody, is really to measure the number of requests increase or decrease as opposed to the number of users because sometimes we've got users who don't do much within the system, um, other times they do. And so I think both are worthy of measuring, um, but it's important to track at a more fine grained, I think, the requests. But let's just use users here. And so watch when I start measuring this, look at what happens here. And so let's determine whether this is a scalable system. And because you notice 
a significant increase, as a matter of fact, a continual increase in the number of users. Now notice it kind of hops up and down, but you know, if we drew a line, it kind of is showing an increase, but look at our average duration. Now, per week, it's all over the board. And notice kind of in the middle, right above the word time there, we kind of had a little bit of an issue with some average durations, but then it settled down a bit and kind of went back up. But it, overall, this is a demonstration of a scalable system, but it's not only response time. We also want to measure crashes and also timeouts as well as capacities. Now let's take a look at another graph. Um, let's keep using the average response time, but you can replace it with system crashes or timeouts. And notice what happens here when we start charting this. Now, is this a scalable system? So the first graph we saw is, but notice what happens as the number of users or requests increase, look what happens to our average duration, timeouts, or crashes. It takes an upward curve. This is a demonstration of a non-scalable system. Now, it's interesting that I've got this curve non-linear, and that is very accurate because in most cases, you reach kind of a, 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 a straw that broke the camel's back kind of scenario where you get slow degradation until finally, boom, things just stop working. Um, this could be based on the number of database connections um, where well, we start to slow down a bit, but once we've saturated the connection pool to database, maybe it's over to Salesforce or whatever kind of connections we have, uh, once we've saturated that, you'll see these graphs where the curve bends up significantly. And so now we know we have scalability issues within our system. Let me show you a third one because it's also important to measure scalability to demonstrate A, that we don't have scalability issues, and also B, that it's not a scalability issue. Look what happens here. Look at the average duration on the bottom graph. Notice our users and requests are pretty consistent. We really aren't sustaining any growth, but look at our response times, our average duration in milliseconds. It is increasing. And so we can use this kind of correlation to demonstrate that it's not a scalability issue. Now what we can do is write fitness functions to be able to automate this process by actually writing code in a trend-based fitness function that's running continuous in production. Now that sends an alert, for example, when the number of crashes or timeouts or response times or max times increases by a certain amount when the users or requests increase by a certain amount. So notice we're measuring the trend in an automated fashion by the number of users or requests as well as these other factors and looking for a correlation. I can just run this in production. I don't have to be looking at anything. I don't have to be staring at graphs or running analytics. And when this occurs, it notifies me to say, hmm, I think we might have a scalability issue. So this is another way of really measuring that aspect of scalability. You know, measuring some of these illities is a great way of being able to truly define what these illities really mean. All right, so for more information, you can go to developer2architect.com where these lessons are housed on Software Architecture Monday. I also offer private training classes that you can uh, take a look at on my training uh, page on that link right there. And also um, upcoming events page um, shows where I'm at doing online courses or maybe um, public conferences or even public trainings. And so uh, this has been Lesson 71, Measuring Scalability. Again, this is Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. And Thank you so much for listening.